Hello everyone, in this second video in which we will do two experimental tests uh, for this TF mini pulse LiDAR module using the DE0 Nano FPGA kit. But before we start, we have to understand uh, briefly how does this sensor works and also how we can establish uh, a communication link between this sensor and the FPGA uh, kit that we have. So if we would go briefly through this data sheet of the sensor, we can understand that uh, this sensor is actually depending on the time of flight uh, concept to measure the distance in which it's proportional to the phase difference between the emitted modulated signal and the reflected uh, one. Also, from the data sheet, we can understand uh, that uh, the sensor actually, as you can see, has uh, four uh, wires. Uh, the red one for the power supply, uh, the black wire for the ground, and we have the white wire, which is actually for uh, receiving data uh, as commands and so on. And the green wire, we are actually using, uh, using it uh, to receive the data from the sensor. So actually the green wire is actually the transmitting pin of the sensor. But actually for the FPGA, it will be the receiving pin since we, are, we will be receiving the distance and the data and the information uh, in general from this sensor uh, using this uh, wire as I will demonstrate later on. This is actually the box of the sensor. So if we will open it, we'll find inside that we have the sensor itself and we have this uh, 30 centimeter black long uh, connecting wire. Uh, and we have also this uh, GH 1.254P uh, connector, as you can see. Also from this data sheet, we are interested to know uh, the serial port communication protocol. And as it mentioned here, uh, that this sensor is using the UART as uh, the communication interface uh, protocol. And the default baud rate, it is actually this value and the other parameters as mentioned in this table. This is actually a good point since make sure before you uh, buy this uh, sensor that you are selecting the correct one since we have actually here uh, two version two versions of this sensor uh, the first one the one that i picked is actually using uh, the uart for the uh, serial interface uh, protocol but actually there is another uh, version which is uh, using the i2c so make sure that you will select the uh, the, the proper uh, sensor that will be useful in your application. This is actually uh, a very important uh, table in which it explains to us uh, the data format. So the sensor actually is sending nine bytes. The first two bytes, we are using them for uh, the flag or the frame uh, header and so to, uh, to understand uh, the beginning uh, of the data uh, frame and these two bytes has a value of uh, 59 in hexadecimal All right the last uh, byte byte number eight we are actually uh, using this, uh, this one is actually allocated for the checksum to understand that we uh, receiving uh, the frames without any errors uh, byte Number four and five, actually we are using them to, um, to measure the, the, the strength of uh, the detecting uh, uh, signal. And uh, byte number six and seven, we are using them to uh, read the temperature of the module as well. Actually, we are not focusing on these uh, four uh, bytes in this video, but the next one, actually we will take them in our consideration. However, in this video, we just concerned about measuring the distance. So we are just 
focusing on byte number two and byte number three. Each time the sensor is measured uh, a certain uh, distance, it will convert these uh, measured distance into uh, 16 bits. So that's why we have here two bytes. Each one has eight bits, right? So byte number two is actually for uh, the low uh, rep or representing the low byte of the measured distance. And byte number three, it actually represents the high byte of the measured distance. All right, so in order to start doing any uh, experimental tests for this sensor, uh, we need some tools. We need the sensor itself. We need to have any TTL to USB uh, converter board, uh, and we have to bring any uh, USB cable. For sure, we need a, a PC, and in, on this PC, we have to use any testing uh, software to measure uh, the, the, the data itself. Before we start the first experimental test for this sensor, we have to make sure that we are connecting uh, this uh, module properly uh, to the FPGA uh, kit, as we, what we will see right now. the red wire of the sensor is connected to uh, the 5 volt of this FPGA uh, kit. The ground is connected to the ground pin. And then the green wire, as you can see, it's actually connected to the corresponding pin on the FPGA that's responsible for receiving the data uh, from uh, any serial uh, port. Actually, as you can see, we are not using this white wire because we were not aiming to uh, to control or to modify the default parameters of this sensor in at least in this video but later on for sure we can use it as well uh, so in the first uh, experimental test it's so simple all what we will do is to use the module to send data to uh, the FPGA and then we build here uh, a VHDL uh, sub-block that's supposed to receive the serial data and then without doing any uh, further processing to this uh, data it will or the, the UART uh, receiving block will send it to the second sub-block which is the transmitting uh, block and the transmitting block all what it's supposed to do is to take this data and to send it back uh, to uh, the TTL USB converter that we have here. So whatever the sensor will send, it's supposed to be send one more time to uh, the PC and it's supposed to be displayed here. This is actually so important step to make sure that we, we don't have any problems with uh, the interfacing uh, protocols and um, the embedded uh, communication uh, which uh, blocks that has been written using the VHDL. The next step is to use any software that should allow you to receive and to transmit serial data. And make sure before you start that you have all the parameters uh, ha have been selected uh, correctly according to uh, the data sheet of the sensor. All right. Then the next step, it's just about uh, how to configure the FPGA uh, kit itself, all right? So here, I will configure uh, the FPGA kit. One more time. All right. So now the FPGA is actually starting uh, uh, receiving some information. So if we return back here, this is what we can see. That the sensor is sending some data, and this data is actually con is converting 
or uh, have been uh, further processing uh, using the FPGA board and the FPGA will send them back to the PC. All right. Um, for sure, we cannot understand anything from this data. We can understand them, but it's so difficult for us as a human to understand what uh, does each frame of these data represent uh, to us. Uh, this is actually the first experimental test that we are making sure that there is no problem. Everything is uh, perfect. The sensor is uh, continue to transmit the data without any interruption or any uh, issues. Then the next step is how to convert or to extract the uh, targeted data from these uh, bytes and to convert it to something readable for us as human. All right, so how we can convert these uh, hexadecimal uh, values into something meaningful? Um, all what we have to do is to connect this pin here. All right. And then we have just to trigger one of these uh, switches. And then we will find actually that the sensor will just try to transmit the distance, as we can see right now. All right, so now this distance from the, the sensor to the ceiling is actually uh, 179 centimeters, all right? Uh, and for sure, if I will try to um, to change or to put some obstacles here in front of the sensor, we will find that the, the distance uh, will be uh, varied. So now it's 10 centimeters, 15, uh, 19, and it will be decreasing one more time to six centimeters, uh, five, 13, five, 12, 19, 20, and so on, all right? And now after I removed my hand, so it is uh, indicating um, one, uh, 163 uh, centimeters, all right? Um, the next step is actually depends on bringing this um, uh, laser meter, all right? And then we will try to compare the data that will be received from the sensor with the data that will be received from um, this LiDAR module. I'm not sure if it's like uh, clear with you or not, but here the sensor actually from the GUI is measuring um, 172 centimeters while the um, meter is um, measuring um, 160 uh, centimeters from the um, laser meter. All right. Um, it's a little bit difficult to show to you exactly how I did it, but anyway, so, you know, even for small distance, so this is what we can do. Uh, we can see that the sensor is now reading from the GUI here um, 17 centimeters, all right, while from the sensor it is measuring um, 23, all right. Um, so actually what I found is that we have around, um, how can I say it, like we have around like plus and minus eight centimeters uh, difference between the two uh, sensors. 
So now in this case, the sensor is reading uh, 151 centimeters, while the sensor is uh, giving to me, um, sorry. Okay, so now it's like uh, 157 centimeters from uh, the LiDAR module, and from the sensor it's uh, 171 centimeters, all right? Um, now, or just let me, let us make it in front of the curtain. Okay, so now we can see that the laser sensor is detecting uh, around um, one meter while uh, the data from uh, the LiDAR sensor, it's around 990 um, centimeters. All right. Um, all right. In front of this um, object, we can find that the sensor is reading um, 81 centimeters while the data that has been uh, measured from the lidar from the uh, laser sensor it's around 80 uh, centimeters so we have like as i said like some tolerance in the measuring uh, distance of this sensor but uh, again it's so acceptable as well uh, so i guess that's it in this video uh, so far and um, before i end this video i just want to make sure um, that all what I did in this second uh, video tutorial uh, is that I wrote down a VHDL code that actually can detect uh, the beginning of, uh, of, of any uh, frame and then it could do the checksum to make sure that we received it correctly without any errors it will ignore all the uh, other uh, bytes and then it will extract these two bytes for the distance right and then it will group them together and then uh, it will convert this data to a BCD uh, data and then using the transmitting uh, sub block inside the FPGA chip it will send this uh, data uh, to the GUI all right so we will actually have the reading of the distance as you can see here all right, so we are receiving the distance without any uh, issues at all. All right, so here, four centimeters, six centimeters, 23, 27, 60, um, 12 again, all right, and then 10 centimeters, five centimeters and then after I remove my hand it will be uh, 174 centimeters so everything is working perfectly and then you can do uh, inside your lab if you have the same uh, thing that you can do the same uh, procedure to make sure that everything is working fine before integrating uh, this sensor with any big uh, projects uh, thank you for watching but I just want to tell you at the end that in the next video we just uh, want to include these two bytes uh, for uh, these two uh, bytes of the uh, uh, of the signal strength and also these two bytes for the sensor temperature as well because they are so important as what we will explain in the next video thank you for watching hopefully you uh, will be with us in the second video as well